A fierce battle gets underway between a couple of armies, and our hero, Tai Chi, narrates how different his life was with Rin. Not too long ago, they were simple school students living normal lives, but now they're fighting giant armies without even flinching. Tai Chi shows off his powers, and then we're taken to a flashback where he and Rin chill with each other on their way to school. Meanwhile, a sage girl is attacked by an evil soldier but gets rescued by her guard. This leads to a teleportation spell that takes both Tai Chi and Rin to a fantasy world. Suddenly, they are confronted by a demon horse and need to act fast. Tai Chi does his best to save Rin, so he distracts the demon horse and attacks it with a stone. Luckily, a team of magical warriors show up to save Tai Chi with their swords, arrows, and fire blasts. The team explains to him that this was an obsidian horse, which is considered to be the strongest monster in the area. Later at night, Rin feels bad because Tai Chi almost sacrificed himself to save her. She sits silently by the moon's side, but the lover boy makes up with her by using his charm. The next day, the team drops off the couple at a local town so that they can register themselves. They are told to assess their magical skills. Soren puts her hand on a magical crystal and is shown to have strong magical affinity. Tai Chi has even stronger magic. A warrior girl named Mira and the guild master Gerard send the couple to meet Lemmy, a spicy wizard girl. Mira tells the babe to dress up, and then she assesses Tai Chi and Rin. Surprisingly, Tai Chi has astounding stats, and even Rin is an elite level mage. Lemmy says that Tai Chi is so overpowered that he can have any girl he wants, but this makes Rin jealous. Now that our heroes need to be trained, Lemmy and Mira decide to give them a lesson on how to use magic. When Tai Chi asks about his own abilities, Lemmy says that she cannot explain anything because he's a unique magician. During training, Tai Chi struggles to unleash his true powers, but Rin is shown to be a fast learner. She goes to check up on Tai Chi, but he hasn't had much luck. Suddenly, our hero hears a fairy's voice and sees a magical glow. During a tasty meal, Lemmy reminds Tai Chi that it's only going to get tougher from here on. Time passes by, and we can see our heroes becoming even better with their skills. Tai Chi takes down a demon wolf, but Rin is on another level as she defeats multiple monsters with a combination of her elemental magic. An obsidian horse shows up, but even that isn't enough to slow down the couple. That night, Lemmy finally explains that Rin and Tai Chi were transported here by a summoner spell, which is considered to be extremely high-level magic. This only motivates Tai Chi as he feels he and Rin can go back home if they find the sorcerer who summoned them. At night, Tai Chi hears the same fairy voice again and tries to figure out where it's coming from. Regardless, he and Rin go back to the town of Aspire and begin their new lives as adventurers. One day, the couple is given a quest which has already been failed twice by other guild members. Tai Chi and Rin are a little suspicious but agree to the task after being promised a rank promotion. Our heroes go around town and learn that everything has become expensive because monsters have been robbing the food supplies and causing a shortage. Tai Chi and Rin enter a pub and beat up all the goons in order to gain some intel on the matter. The bar patrons are revealed to be simple pawns, but our heroes get attacked by a trio of ninja girls. Afterwards, Tai Chi can sense that the ninja girls are strong, but he and Rin take them down with ease after using some of their basic moves. A blonde ninja named Anna is left behind as her comrades disappear with a smoke bomb. She is sent to Gerard to be monitored, and then Mira shows up to help the couple on their quest. Our heroes go to a local forest where they are to monitor who's stealing the supplies. Tai Chi meets a boy named Kasim but senses something odd. Later, the team checks out the forest and are suddenly attacked by an army of orcs and an ogre leader. Mira takes down the orcs with her moves, and Tai Chi is able to defeat the ogre with ease, showing that he has become even more powerful. Later at night, 
an invisible warrior named Grammy is shown absorbing powers from all the forest beasts. The next day, Tai Chi and the team inspect the forest once again, and they find a bunch of thieves trying to steal the fruits. Our heroes are able to defeat them with ease and then cast some thanks, though. However, Tai Chi senses that Kasim's hands are way too soft for a farmer, and then he reveals that he was the mastermind behind the orc attack. Grammy also shows up and attacks the team, so Rin and Mira take her on. A fierce battle follows, but Rin is able to match Grammy with ease. Meanwhile, Kasim summons a frost elemental monster to fight Tai Chi our hero tries to slash the beast, but it's of no use as it can regenerate. Grammy continues to dodge the girls and proves to be a law for them to handle. The magician boy tries to tackle the frost beast, but it only gets worse for him as Kasim transforms it into a red elemental. Tai Chi starts to get hurt, and then Kasim reveals he wants the magician boy's powers for his evil plan. He says he's using Yura and Rin as hostages and will do not good things to them if Tai Chi doesn't comply. However, the girls are able to get back up and use a series of combo moves on Grammy. They team up to use fire blasts and sword slashes to defeat Grammy with ease. However, Kasim shows up and reveals that the red elemental has totally dominated Tai Chi things aren't looking good for our hero, but then he hears the fairy voice again and begs for her power. The fairy girl Ariel agrees to do so, and then Tai Chi revives himself with magic that is unimaginable. The red elemental unleashes a fire blast on him, but it's of no use as Tai Chi shows off his wind powers to destroy it with ease. He then uses an ultra blast to attack Kasim but faints from the overdrive, so Kasim only loses a limb in the process. Tai Chi wakes up at Lemieux's place and decides to eat five meals at the same time. Lemieux reveals that he used up all his magic, which is why he's so hungry. She also states that Kasim had used a crimson pact, which is illegal considering it uses the blood of mortals and demons to create forbidden magic. Tai Chi then learns that he is a summoner who is possibly even stronger than a dragon. Meanwhile, Kasim and Grammy meet there who decides to use them as his servants even further. Then Tai Chi finds a woman getting stopped by a couple of goons, so he saves her. However, he learns that this is Anna, who is now a changed babe. They team up and start exploring a secret called Hideout. At night, Mira and Rin are attacked by a cold warrior, but they take him on with ease. Unfortunately, Grammy shows up and takes Mira away while Rin has to deal with more cold warriors. She finishes off the cold members and is then confronted by Grammy. However, instead of fighting, Grammy tells Rin to go help Mira, who is going to be used for a crimson pact. Rin goes to save the elf girl, and she does so with ease. However, Kasim and Lodger show up to reveal that a monster army is going to attack the town and is attacked by a golem monster. But Tai Chi saves her and promises to keep her away from danger. Our hero uses his lightning fist to break through the golem with ease, and then the couple sees an open door. Here they meet the Earth girls Mello and Milo. Meanwhile, Mira and Rin join Gerard and Lemmy to plan against the monster army. Milo and Mello awaken a goblin army by using the Crimson Pact, so Tai Chi has to drain his magic to fight them all. A tense sequence follows, but Milo and Mello lose control as the goblins attack them as well. Luckily, Tai Chi comes to the rescue but learns that there are many more tunnels with many more goblins. Lemmy and Rin contemplate using a mixture spell to count with the monster army, and after careful consideration, they go ahead with it. Rin unleashes all her powers to create a pit and fill it with counter-explosive elements. This allows the town to gain an advantage, and they finish off the goblins after a long arduous battle. However, water unleashes crimson packed monsters, and things look tricky. Luckily, Tai Chi shows up with his new magic girls and reassures Gerard he's going to fight them. Meanwhile, Lemmy decides to unleash her full potential and blasts her way through the goblin army. However, there were three crimson ogres who were unaffected, so the girls continue the battle. 
It's of no use as they get defeated, and Rin is about to be defeated. Luckily, Tai Chi shows up to save her just as she considers telling him her true feelings. It's time to rumble, so Tai Chi awakens his red glow and defeats one of the ogre monsters with his punch. More crimson beasts arrive, so our hero decides to show off more of his powers. He's able to take down the ogres with ease while Anna helps the people of the town. However, a cult member shows up and seemingly brainwashes her. Milo and Mello help the others take down the smaller fry while Tai Chi dominates the ogres. The going is good, but then a twin-headed dragon shows up and unleashes its fireball to establish dominance. This is an ominous sign, but Tai Chi decides to stay back and fight the dragon. Rin joins him, and they have a brief chat before our hero goes to challenge the dragon. Things aren't looking good for Tai Chi as the dragon dominates him as if he's an ant against an elephant. The battle becomes one-sided, and it only gets worse. Anna shows up in her brainwashed state. Tai Chi snaps her out of it, but it's too late as the dragon unleashes a finisher blast. The couple avoids it, but Anna gets injured and has an emotional chat with Tai Chi before she seemingly disperses. This anchors Tai Chi, so he summons Ariel and finally forms a pact with her to come in as the Wind Goddess, his new partner. With this new power, our hero confronts the dragon and demands to know why it's attacking the town. The dragon refuses to say anything till the battle is over, so Tai Chi unleashes his finisher Wind Blast. The dragon also uses his fire and water combo blast, but it's of no use as Tai Chi emerges victorious. The dragon finally explains that he was requested to fight Tai Chi by a devil girl, later revealed to be Shade, the spirit queen of darkness.